Hey, everybody. If somebody on the live chat could just let me know that they're hearing this, that would be awesome. I've got the live chat here on my iPad and um, just making sure everything's working. And then we're going to get started. I'm just looking at my clock. It looks like we're almost at eight o'clock. Um, hi, everybody. Good evening or good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. My name is Ginger, and thank you so much for taking your time to join us for what I call global dotting time. It is a time for us to gather together, to unite, to create a piece that represents us and um, all of our time spent together. So by you being here, you are making it that much more awesome. So thank you so much. Um, I'm just kind of getting my bearings here. It's been a while since I've broadcast live. So first thing is I think the technology is working and um, I have to kind of go back and forth between devices to see the live chat and I will do my best to stay connected with you all that way, those of you who can uh, live chat. So let's just start by setting ourselves up here with what we need. Um, and before we do that, I'm going to read a little something that I wrote to frame our intention around the global dotting time. It is our intention to gather together to form a peaceful space where we experience our interconnection and oneness. We are transcending borders. And if you've been reading the live chats already, you know we're doing that and we're transcending boundaries to simultaneously create a symbol of our unity. The dots we paint will signify every person connecting here, each one strengthening and expanding this space. The finished mandala is a beautiful collection of us all and represents this powerful time together. What you will need this evening is some paints, which I'm just leaning over, it's on my other table to get and you will need some dotting tools. They do not need to be ours, although that's what I refer to, and certainly if you've purchased that, you've supported our um, global missions, which I'll talk about in a little bit as we get going along. So you will need either our set of seven dotting tools or our set of eight. I'm going to be dotting two versions this evening, one using the first set that I mentioned, and then another uh, version using the second set. So I'll show you those as we get going along. You're going to need something to dot on. So if you are creating with our larger set or the set that creates the larger version, you're going to need something about six inches across. That'll give you plenty of space. I always add about an extra inch on to what I tell people to use for their surface. Uh, so you have lots of space. If you're dotting it with our set, new set of eight tools, you'll need something a little smaller, although you could use something bigger if you wish. It's just not going to take up as much room. So I have a three inch disc that I'm going to dot on. Have some paper towel to wipe your tools. And also you will need some paints. So I'm going to put the camera down in a moment and you'll see the paint tray. I'm just not quite ready to, to do that. So I'm going to just describe the paints. You're going to need a bright yellow, a light orange, and then get yourself five shades of blue. Um, one being really deep navy and then all the way down to a very light pale blue. You'll need white and if you have any little fixes that you want to fix up and you're painting on a black surface, you'll need some black paint. So that's what you'll need for paints. We will be painting our way through this particular design, which I have called the loyal pattern. Um, so we're going to be reflecting a little bit around this topic. Um, so our intention this evening is not just to dot, but to connect and spend some time as a group reflecting on this topic, which I'll talk about as we get moving along. 
When I designed this pattern, you'll see there's lots of blues. And there's one step where we will be creating with the yellow and the light orange. So as we get going along, I'll talk a little bit more about how that um, was come to be in my mind to represent loyal. But essentially, the way I look at loyalty for me, and you can start to reflect on its meaning yourself as part of our time together, um, but to me, loyalty sometimes is tested. And that's maybe when you realize that you are or are not being loyal to somebody or the reverse, maybe somebody is or is not being loyal to you. So as we start out the design, we'll start out with the blues um, and then we'll make our way to the yellow, that burst of orange and yellow, which is that instance or that circumstance that will happen in times to test the loyalty. And then our pattern gets right back on track with the blue uh, to represent that somebody or situation was resolved and loyalty stood the test. So that's what this, this pattern represents symbolically to me. You may derive something else from it. That's fine too. You may be just here just to dawdle on and, and connect with people and have fun and not be thinking so much about the loyalty topic totally up to you. I'll offer you some questions and some things to consider around loyalty. And that is up to you how much you want to, uh, to connect and draw along that. So let's get started. And I'm going to put the camera down. That's a great time for me to kind of look back and forth on the chat on my iPad. And uh, we will begin. One other thing I guess I should say is that you do need to know how to use our dotting tools. I put a couple of posts in um, our Facebook event page and gave you a link to my tips around using the dotting tools. There could be some other awesome tips out there likely. So I'm not going to be spending the time in this video doing a warm up to train people how to use the tools. I do it often in other videos. So you can check out the one I put there on our Facebook event page, or you can go to other YouTube um, uh, videos that I have posted because often I have done a little warm up and did my standard teaching people how to use the tools. So in this event, we will not be doing that. If you need to learn how to use the tools, just pause me, watch one of those videos and, and learn and then jump back in with us. Okay. You will need a hairdryer too. I forgot to mention that. Have that handy because we're going to be painting in layers of dots in between. We will need them to be dry. So you will use the hair dryer to speed that up. So have that on hand as well. All right, so let's put the camera down and you can take a look at my paints. Uh, the camera, I love this camera because I can darken it and lighten it. So just give me a moment to kind of orientate it in a way that's going to be effective for us. Aha, uh -huh. so the colors sometimes are not completely true. So for instance, the orange and the yellow, you can see I'm darkening it up. As I darken it up, they really show their difference here. Um, so I won't be keeping the camera this dark, but I want you to see this is this true to what they are and what I'm using. Um, so I'm gonna lighten the exposure here a little bit and they'll probably start to look very similar. So um, just keep that in mind. I'm going to bring my iPad over. I will be always demonstrating on the larger size first. So I'm bringing over my bigger size. And I tend to be a little bit quick with the process of dotting. So the reason I'm doing two is not just to show you how it can work with the smaller size compared to the larger size but also to slow me down <laughs> so that I'm a little bit more on pace with you. Sometimes when I do these events, I have a guest and that helps as well to slow me down. And I now have the iPad near me. So if you need to express that I'm going a little bit fast, you can just keep in mind, I want to know the pace of the majority of people who are painting one copy. Um, I won't have time. We wouldn't want to slow down for people painting two, three or four at a time. Um, so just pace yourself doing one and if you see hey, I can keep up with ginger and do a second one Then jump in and do that second one So the very first dot that we will create we need tool one 
which is our largest one. And I'm just kind of organizing myself and you can't see it, but I am. So we need tool number one. I've whipped out a brand new set of tools here and my camera is showing that upside down. So I'm going to do that. There we go. Okay, so this is tool number one. I have marked the center of my disc. It's really hard to see on the camera. You just kind of have to trust me that I found my center. And the color we will need is the darkest of your blues. So I'm going with my really dark navy. It's probably showing up almost, almost black, okay? It is not black, it is navy. So what we're going to do is find the center that we've marked and using lots and lots of this navy paint, I'm going to cover up that mark for my center. You notice I go really slow and I'm going to increase that exposure. Nope, went the wrong way. There we go. So that we can see that navy and be aware that I've even painted it. So now I'm going to bring over my little disc and I'm going to do this with my other set of tools, our set of eight tools and create it in the small size. And my challenge tonight is going to be to stay present enough, focused enough that I always gather the tool from the correct set because I've got them separated right now into two piles but I just picture me getting a little sidetracked perhaps and someone asked if the colors are need to be exact you do not have to have exact colors when I create the instructions um, I write it you know with general words because we've got people awesomely from all over the world so having the exact color is pretty much virtually impossible unless we were to buy the same bottle from the same brand so just enjoy yourself get a color that's approximate and go with it and then if you decided you wanted to try it a little shade differently you could redo it another time that's the amazing thing and the wonderful thing about it so just use an approximate color so we have tool one, this dark navy color starting us off. This is an eight point mandala. And so now we're going to do the setup for the eight point. And what we need, again, I'm always going to start with this larger version. And if you're new to it, stick with doing this larger version until you have practiced, you know, for a little bit, a couple of weeks, and then you'd be ready to give the smaller versions a try. So this is tool six. I apologize, this is going to show up backwards, but we do need tool six, and the color we're going to work with is, I call it peacock blue. It's just the shade lighter than the navy. So out of my five shades of blue, navy's the darkest, we just painted it here, and we're going to use the second darkest, this navy color. All right, so here I go. I'm going to put on my first set of eight dots. And if you're new to this, I will talk you through how to put them on because the first eight are placed in a very specific way, at least for me. I've um, always trained people to do it this order, and it really helps to set the mandala up evenly. So what you do is you put two dots, one at the top and one at the bottom. That's how I word it with young kids. Or you could picture it as an analog clock where you've got one dot at the 12 o'clock spot and one at the six. And your goal is always for them to almost touch. If they touch, no big deal. If you were in one of my live events, you would have got to do my first time daughter's pledge where we get everybody to pledge that they'll let everything go for 45 minutes just not worrying about it. Okay, so when I say let things go, if you're painting with a friend and it's your first time, you and your friend, already you will see differences. Somebody's dot's gonna be bigger or smaller than, your, than the other person's and that's okay. You're always aiming for the dots to be a little bit bigger, just a slightly bigger is what I go for than the size at the bottom of the tool. That's what I aim for. Okay, so let's keep on trucking to make eight dots of all the same size and all the same color. So you saw me rotate my disc. 
is what I want to do is keep my hand position the same and make two more dots in exactly the same position. So they are at, keep turning my um, disc, I want it to look straight up and down for you. So you have one at the top, one at the bottom again, and it divided the distance between the first two dots in half. Then you turn your disc, and you're going to repeat that process. So I've turned it, and I put one at the bottom, one at the top. I mean, it doesn't matter which comes first, the top or the bottom. And then you turn it one more time. You see you've got six beautiful peacock blue dots. It is a beautiful color. I love this color. And you repeat that process. Now, if at any point I am going faster than you, just remember I'm going to pop over to this other disc and repeat that, hopefully with the correct tool. This is me being mindful this whole time. So you've got a little bit of uh, time to catch up and you'll see me repeat the process, although I probably won't talk as much through it here um, with this little disc. <laughs> it's hard to see the middle dot until I get these other ones around it. All right. And back I go. So after we get our first set of eight dots in here, we have uh, set it up. Now, even me with all my practice, and I've done lots, this guy's a little bit close, and that would be one I just let go. And it's really tricky to get really even set up here with this tiny stuff. So it kind of starts to correct itself as things move along. So that's what you are aiming for. If any little dot of these eight are a little smaller than the others, just um, go back over it with the same size tool in the same color and just make it grow. You want your dots to be about the same size. Okay, we're gonna keep trucking with our um, loyal colors, all these blues, and we need next Tool seven, again, it's backwards. Sorry about that, everybody. We want tool seven. The color we'll be using is our lightest of the five blues. It's very, very light. I mixed a color to do this with some white paint. And then where we're going to put our dots, where are we putting them? Oh, we're going to do something special. I'm looking at my directions. So I'm going to just put a little tiny bit of paint on this tool. So right now it looks like I don't have any on there. You see I turn it over and I've got just a hair there. So just control how much paint you've put on that tool by adding a little bit. It's just touching into the paint. All right, so what we're going to do is go really close to our navy dot, sorry, it looks like I'm off kilt here. We want it to be really close, and then we're going to make one more dot very close to the first one. So they almost touch. The first one almost touches the navy, the second one almost touches the very first of these little guys. And then I go back, I get a little bit more of that very pale blue. And I do the same thing. And you'll notice I work in the same positions up at the six o'clock and or sorry, down at the six o'clock and up at the 12. And I rotate my desk and I do the same thing. So if you're new to this, you'll see I'm encouraging your hand to always work from the same position. And that is because as you can see, I do not use guidelines. I don't put guidelines on anybody's pieces when I work with them as first timers or anybody, unless we were doing a really challenging piece. And this one is not, this was be a beginner level piece. Um, so we do, we can use the center dot as our focus piece, a focus and we'll be able to align as we move outwards with that center dot. And I'll be teaching you how, and this is the first step, always to have your hand in the same position. Now here comes a little tiny one. And part of my problem tonight is, is I'm having trouble seeing it so tiny. And my lighting is a little bit wonky. I went for lighting for videotaping and it's not the greatest lighting. I'm getting shadows 
over my dotting. So until I kind of get it outwards a little bit, it's going to probably give me grief. How are we doing out there, everybody? If someone could just uh, give me a thumbs up or something on the live chat and let me know we're still hearing everybody. Everybody's hearing me. That would be awesome. Okay. So there we go. Our big version and our small version. So this is um, step C that we just did. If you are working along with the copy, some people went on the website and, and nabbed it before we got together today. So we're going to do the double now. The double is a word that I've created to explain two dots that are made with the same size tool. Um, and we need tool six to do this particular set. The color we want is neon blue. I call it, well, I don't call this neon blue, actually the, the bottle, this is a Craft Smart paint. Um, it's really the, out of the five shades of blue, this is the medium or the right in the middle. So you see my five shades of blue, it's hard to tell, but this one right here under my thumb is the very pale blue. So I'm using this one, the center of the five. I suggest you watch me do a couple sets of these doubles because the placement of this is a, it's a little tricky. Um, it's doable, but it helps to see a couple sets of them done before you start going. So we're going to be doing two dots. And again, I'm going back to my big version. Two dots that are exactly the same, both painted with tool six, both painted with that neon blue. And what we want is for the center of them to almost touch each other to almost touch the little pale blue guy we just painted and hopefully align with the center too. I always find it takes me one or two sets to kind of sort out where that first dot placement goes. And I usually overshoot it either to the left or the right. And then I adjust for the second or third set. By the time I've done the fourth set, I'm usually doing all right. Okay, so it's going to look like, you can see here, they're very close to touching once you get a bunch of the sets on there. Work really hard to get the double so that they almost touch. So that will keep them kind of neat and orderly as best as we can. Dip back into your paint each time because you want these guys to be the same size. That's always the guideline anyhow. So as I was reflecting, I'm going to start to talk about Loyal as we paint all these blue dots. On the topic of Loyal last week, I did some quiet meditating time. And I got this really clear sense that the thing that I should bring up while we are dotting our way through this together um, is just for people to start to think about and become aware of where their loyalties are. And it was almost like this sense that I got that um, we're born into places and circumstances and families, and we may develop loyalty to those people, places, circumstances, and it goes unquestioned. It goes without awareness. Um, so that was just kind of the first thing. It's just for us to start to reflect upon who we're loyal to, what we're loyal to. I think we can be loyal to a brand or a company or perhaps um, organizations. And maybe we can think of ones that we hadn't considered in the past or realized because we're about to dot in a few more steps. We'll dot that orange and yellow step. We might not have had anything that's ever challenged our loyalty to that person or perhaps a company or whatever it is. We might not have had any reason to consider, oh yeah, we're being loyal. Am I going to continue my loyalty with this person now that this situation has arise, arose? So we, uh, we may have gone unchecked. All right. Now my little guy is looking like a whole bunch of little dots. 
because that's what it is so far. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see. And this is why, you know, here I am. I've painted thousands of these. And so not because my skills any higher or whatever. It's just a lot of practice. But even so, I want you to see that I'm gentle with myself. I can see dots that are touching each other. Maybe it's not as much as I want them to be. Um, and that's okay. It's going to let it go. If they start to touch each other, there's really not a whole lot we can do here. And we're boogieing along. I, if you wanted to, you could stop a piece, dry it with a hair dryer, cover them up with black paint. So that it, it is possible to undo them. I, even if I was doing it and didn't, wasn't in this situation, I keep on moving along with those guys. All right. So we just did step D. And we're going to start to move away from those little tiny, tiny, tiny intricate dots finally and breathe some bigger dots into this. So this is tool three. We want tool three. And there's one blue we have not used yet. It's the second lightest. So in here we've got our lightest blue. It's almost a white. Mine is. We want the one that is just a hair darker than that. And what we're going to do, this is a great step for our newbies, for all of us, to practice this alignment that I was talking about. So tool three in that shade of blue I just mentioned, it's almost the lightest, but not quite. Keeping your hand either in the six o'clock position like this one is, or the 12 o'clock position. So always when you're dotting, if you're new to this, Get all the details sorted out before you start in on a step. Figure out what tool you need. Figure out what color you need. Watch the demonstration as to where the dots go. So in this case, we want to align with the center. So even if our little double that we just did is a little to the left or a little to the right, let this dot we're creating right now be aligned with the middle. It will correct anything that went astray or it will start to pull it back into correction. And at the very least, it will stop it from swaying to the left or the right. And as we go out, we'll keep uh, focused on spots like this or steps like this that allow us this opportunity to line up with that focal point in the center. It's almost like there's an imaginary point in the middle of that navy blue dot that we created first in that imaginary spot in the middle is what everything relates to all right my camera might take a minute to focus there it goes almost All right, so that was tool number three on my big one. I did a pretty good job of getting them all the same size. If any of them were a little small, then I should go back over them. So now I'm going to, this is our double-ended uh, tool set. And I need tool three or size three. So here's my little tiny guy here. And I've only painted this the one time when I created it. And I actually created this particular design. I'm trying to think. I think it was over Christmas time. It's been a while. So I've never painted it on this size. And it's going to be a good learning experience for me to walk you through it and see what's happening. See if any adjustments need to be made. These are really like a recipe, like when you're creating something, it's a guideline. So you might need to make an adjustment for what's happening at your piece. And that's completely fine and brings you into the present, gets you thinking. Now I'm noticing this one here is a little tiny. And if I think of the circle here, it doesn't jut out as evenly into that imaginary circle. So I want it to grow just a hair. So I took some paint and went back over it. Okay. I'm doing a good job of putting my tools back into my um, little container. I'm going to show you here. I'm going to bring this up. I'll be going to be upside down each time I do this. Um, 
just a little brain break. I wanted to share this with you. It's probably, I don't know if it's showing up backwards on, on your video, but this is this amazing little um, ceramic pottery tool container that Lisa made and gave to me. So Lisa is um, my assistant, helps me with all sorts of things. Um, and she loves pottery. If you email our info at Otana account, at that email address, it's going to be Lisa you're going to hear from. And she made that for me. Um, so I, that's what's keeping me on the straight and narrow today. Because the set of eight tools are in that. And then I have my other set of tools just laying out on the table. So I just thought I'd bring that up, give you a chance to catch up and show you Lisa's amazing work. She does awesome stuff with pottery. All right. We just did step E. And we're going to do, oh, yay. Going to do, uh, I, I call these the taper. And I know some people call it walk the dot, whatever you want to call it. It's the fun stuff. So I got my camera upside down again. There we go. We need tool seven. We're going to use our very lightest blue. And again, I want you to really be mindful of how much paint you're putting on this tool. Keep it as minimal as you can at least for the first one that we're going to do just to see and what happens and then you can adjust if you need to so what we're going to do you can watch one of these done i'm going to outline or taper or walk the dot and what i did is i aligned that first dot with that imaginary spot in the center did one side left or right it doesn't matter go back and get a little bit more pale blue dot right over top of that first dot. And what that does is that enlarges it a little bit, just a hair, and lets it be the focal point, okay? So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring it in here. This is going to take a little bit of time. And like I said, I'm pretty quick compared to uh, new folks. So that's why I've got my second piece over here that I'm going to do. It's a great time for us just to either be completely present with what we're doing with our dots, or if you're really practiced with making these dots, you're probably your mind can handle something else. And you might want to start to think about that loyalty thing that I was just sharing with you. That could be something that you consider right now. And I'm just going to let you dot. Let us all be here together and just even Take a moment to take in that there are people sitting around many countries in the world right now doing exactly what you're doing, being present with you and me. It's awesome. Newbies, you'll notice I'm always working. I like to work down close to my, my body at the six o'clock spot. There will be about, it's almost half and half. Some people will like to work down here, others up here. Um, some people will do all of the left side of these and then go back and do the right. The only thing I would suggest is that your hand is not working its way all the way around. Your hand isn't the item or the element moving, the disc is. Way easier to build these out in alignment if you do that. So just remember, you're gonna see me finish in this bigger version up, but then I'm popping over to the little guy and doing that one. So I'm only halfway done should hopefully give each of you time to catch up if you are still working on that. Now, a little tip for anybody who's using our set of eight dotting tools, in the designs, they, they work interchangeably. You can use this design with either set of tools, um, but the instructions are going to say tool seven or size seven. 
you can choose actually i mean the tool eight is just a, a little bit finer and i'm going to actually dot this with tool eight you can do it either way it's just going to be with tool eight create a really tiny fine set of dots and i figure you know what i've probably i guess i shouldn't say it because i know that you manifest what, some, what you say and speak about but i'm just going to say that um, i'm trying to phrase this in a positive way i'm a little concerned about my vision getting into a certain stage in my life and i can still see these little tiny dots and i'm like if i can see them right now i'm going to paint them so i'm going to celebrate my eyesight right now that's what i'm doing Oh, somebody noticed my nails. Oh, thank you. I I just bought them yesterday and I just pressed them on. I want I coordinated them with our design. You can see it. other than the gold, there's no gold in our design, but they're actually a navy color. One thing I'm working on for our next event is to have some music playing. And that is a little bit of a thing that you have to overcome to do that on YouTube and do it in a way that is upholding of, of copyright. So uh, I'm very respectful of that. My background, I'm not an artist by, by uh, background and training, but I am a musician. So um not only do i want to maintain really good standings with the youtube account but i'm also respectful of musicians work so i'm just putting feelers out to my musical community and trying to work to get um something that i can have playing during different times like this during the time when we were all joining in and it's just a little lead into the event so hopefully next time which is set already um, we will have some music to play, some very fitting music. There, I'm doing such a good job of keeping these tools in the right spot. Oh. So it gets this really nice shape at this point. Um, it's got quite a lovely little circular shape. Now, if you're new or even if you're not new, you might start to notice that the spaces uh, in here may be disproportionate so if that's happening something's probably a little bit out of alignment with the center so we'll keep focusing on that don't worry about it as you keep working and keep practicing keep doing this a wonderful pastime that will develop it's a skill and you'll get better at it we need tool three again folks and here comes this spot in our design where I was mentioning before, symbolically, this is this is that moment when loyalties are challenged. We're going to paint it symbolically right now. Um, so we want tool three and we want light orange. And its position, we've been building out on this alignment here. Okay, we've had all these lines coming and going and what we're going to be doing is we're going to put I'm going to show you with a dry tool a dot here turn our our piece and put it here and so forth we want as best as we can for there to be an imaginary circle that's um, evenly outwards from the center so we want these to be equal distance if we can from the center that's what we're aiming for so here comes my first one nice big beautiful tool three light orange dot now keep in mind like i said in the beginning this likely is showing up almost like a yellow to you right now i'll see if i can darken it up oh i'm going the wrong way let's see i will put it a little bit darker like this for now so you can see it as closer to the orange color that it truly is um, while i paint this step and then i'll likely change the camera back okay so we're going to be creating these other set of imaginary lines coming outwards from the center. So here is our symbolic circumstance 
situation, a test of loyalty. We are painting it right now. Maybe somebody is testing your loyalty right now. Maybe you are testing someone else's something you've done. They don't know. So there it is on my large version. And I'm gonna go over here to the little guy with tool three, do the same thing. I'll keep the camera darkened so you can see this orange over here. Now I'm already seeing in my small version <laughs> an issue I'm going to have. It's not appearing. If you, you can start to see how close together um, the little tiny taper dots are on the small version. And the larger version has a bigger space on mine. So this is typical, even if I was around a group of people and they were all painting this larger version, some people will not have a, a space in there. So I'm gonna be talking about that next because you will adapt your piece, your approach accordingly. That's why I said these are like a recipe. And you may add more salt or, or eliminate the salt altogether symbolically speaking. All right, so I've brightened that up and those dots are starting to look less orange, but they are orange. All right, that was step G. If you're new, by the way, um, a couple of things that are becoming apparent here, I can see little tiny um, splatters on my desk I'll be cleaning that up. I always wait till the end to kind of tidy up any little splatters with black paint just so that I have less wet paint to work with. You get a look at it while it's happening. Um, what was the other thing I was going to share with you? Oh, yes, for the newbies, um, dotting, we're going to be painting this. Here's the finished version again. This will be painted in three layers of color. And the first layer of color, we're in the middle of doing it right now it will take about 70% of our time to do this bottom layer of color. And then you can see, this is a good example right in here. Uh, if you look at this dot that we painted a couple of steps ago with tool three in the light blue, it has the light blue on the bottom. The neon blue will come later. And then a third layer will come later that looks almost black, but it's the Navy. Okay. So, you know what? Nobody interrupted me. You're all play. I made a mistake. <laughs> I just realized it. I have painted, got us to paint our center dot. I painted it with the right size, but I used the navy color and not the peacock blue, which it should have been. So we'll talk about that. This is great learning experience, <laughs> how to fix mistakes. So just to clarify, <laughs> I have got us all to paint a different color. We could say wrong, it depends on if you wanna change it or not. But on the original, the bottom color here is the peacock blue. I got you to paint navy. So mine's drying. The risk with leaving it the navy is it could dry so dark that you won't see it, which is what's happening, you can barely see it. So likely I will get us to change it. Ah, oh, of course I'd start it with making a mistake. That's okay, it's all about learning and mistakes are how we learn. Problem solving. Okay, tool seven again, everybody. This is where, again, we may need to problem solve. It depends on what's happened in your piece. So I'm going to show you on this one because I do have the room in this piece to do it. I'm going to take the pale blue, second lightest blue, not the lightest, second lightest. I'm getting just a teeny tiny bit of that pale blue on my tool seven. And what I'm going to do, if space allows, is I am going to go like that. So I'll show you again, I get just a hair of the pale blue, start here. And this is really that imaginary line. We're just basically outlining it or highlighting it, making somebody more aware of it by putting dots on it. 
So here's what may be happening on your piece. You may have, like I do, space in all eight areas. If you do, do this step. You may have this situation going on. In my little tiny version, you can see in here, that's really squishy. I do not have room to put those in there. I'd just be putting dots on top of dots. Over here, and the major, well, yeah, the majority of the places I have room to do a couple of dots. So what I want you to do is do what the majority is pointing for you to do. If all of your places are squishy like this, just leave this step out. If you've got a bunch of space where most of them you can fit this step in, do it in those spots and leave it out of the other one or two areas. So take a look, assess what you've got going on, make a choice for what your piece is telling you, and then go for it. Or if you don't have room, you're just going to hang tight and let us finish this step. It's any time that there's kind of going in between what's created. There can be a variety of, of amounts of space. So here I go on my little guy. I'm going to zoom right in so you can see me troubleshooting this situation. I'm just trying to get the, get the camera in nice and close for you. So again, really squishy here. I'm going to leave that till last. And I am just picking up the slightest amount of paint. And probably what I'll do is just basically skip over where it's a tight squeeze. I put a little dot in there and then just kind of jump over here. So you don't want to paint over dots that are already there. All that does is make it look like there was a mistake. It makes it look like something was done in error. That one I had enough room to do it. And this one I have almost enough room. So let's see what I do. There we go. Now really on this step, I could have left it off. It's just starting to look a little squishy. And that space might have been a little more attractive if I've left it there, but it's done now. Okay, and here's this spot where it was really squishy. I'm just gonna put a one little dot there and then continue the line up there. All right, whew, we got out of that little corner. All right, bringing that back up. Here's our big guy. We want tool one. I gotta get us on the right track here with tool one. See this next step we're doing is really a reflection or an echo of the center. So we've just painted this symbolic situation, something that's tested the loyalty. And what we're going to do now is reinstate and reaffirm symbolically with our dots that we're remaining loyal. So we're gonna bring back the blue. We want peacock blue, not navy, not the most dark, peacock blue. Now, make sure where you put your dots is checked because we've got a couple of spots there where they could end up and we don't wanna zig when we should zag. So just watch me do two dots before you do anything and then you can start moving along. So I've got my peacock blue. I'm making huge, beautiful dots. I want these to be super big. They should be at least the size of tool one. Uh, ideally, that paint escapes out around the edge of the tool and gets a little bit bigger dot than even the tool is. Okay, so let me highlight where we are placing these dots. I'm trying to do it so you can see it in alignment. So here is our light orange. This dot aligns with that light orange, aligns with the center. The danger is that you could end up aligning it here if you're not super focused. So we want each of these eight dots really big and lined up with that orange dot. Some dots are more foundation. This one really is. This is a, like basically constructing the walls of a house. This is an important stuff. And we're going to be um, 
outlining it. It's like decorating the walls, hanging things on the walls, less foundation stuff. And one more to go. So I'll keep doing this big, big version first. Now my dot here in the center is still wet. So I'm not going to correct it yet. And I'm going to talk you through how to place a correction, you know, in there and do your best at not interfering with what's already there. So I'll be talking you through that. And I'm going to change it to the peacock blue in a little bit. All right, so we've got tool one on my small version. Same placement. Align it with the light orange, and I want it to be really big. I mean, really big is relevant here because this is a tiny dot, but compared to all the other ones, it's it's large. Now my little one in here is dry. So I'm just deciding. I think what I will do, I don't want to, I think I'll wait and correct both of them at the same time. So I'm not going to correct the center of this, even though I could. It's dry enough for me to do it. I'm going to wait. All right. You see it's growing out. This is usually when I'm teaching a group that they start to panic. Oh, Ginger, I'm going to dot right off the center. Um, no, not on mine. This is, I've given myself that extra inch, and hopefully you did too. Hopefully you've given yourself a little bit of extra room. And even if, you know, you go over the edge a little bit, it still will look super cool. So don't worry about that. Now we're going to do a outline around these big dots. So what we're going to do is get tool seven and we want pale blue. That is not the palest of the blues, it's the second lightest. So your second lightest blue. Now let's see how we're going to do this because we're going to go all the way around here with dots that get progressively smaller and we do not want to run out of steam. We don't want to run out of paint here and not have anywhere else, any more paint left on our tool. Okay, so here's what we do. This time I'm going to encourage you to really get a good dollop of paint on your tool. Whereas before when we were working on a smaller uh, outline, less paint. We, we're not going to do that now. We've got a bigger distance to go. So I want you to create one dot that aligns with the middle. So take the time to focus in here and line it up. Then you're going to dot a series of dots on either the left or the right. So to do that and not run out of paint, what I would encourage you to do, keep going back and forth into your paint until you get approximately halfway like if there was an equator if this was <laughs> i love that's the first time i thought of that analogy if there's an equator to this dot you're going to stop at the equator applying more paint and then march all the way around that should get you there easily okay you may adjust like i had plenty of paint so maybe this time if i want those dots to look a little smaller on the end of their taper I might stop a little before the equator. Now it's gonna look a little out of balance, perhaps, but I like it better, so I'm going to do it. Okay, so let the equator be your guide. So again, good dollop of that light blue paint. The first dot marks, here is the center. Here's the center. And then you can go back and forth, reapplying your paint so you don't run out of steam and keep on trucking. All right, so we're just going to settle in here. This will be the longest amount of time. You'll notice if you're new, probably my dots are moving along, trucking along. But remember, I've got my second version to slow me down.
If you have not already done so, when you get a moment, can you, this is um, the second lightest blue. Someone was asking for clarification. This is the second lightest that we're using. If you get a moment and you have not already done so, please let us know on the live chat if you're able to use it, where you are from. I have somebody out there in our virtual space, a very good friend and supporter of Otana, keeping a little tab, a little tally, not a tally, I guess that's the wrong word. She's just marking down for us what uh, places are represented by all of us. So if you haven't already, could you please, when you get a moment, indicate your country, state, province, whatever you want to share. And all we're doing, we're not going to list your name specifically. Um, we're just going to make a list of the locations that are represented because it's pretty amazing. Um, one other time I did this, I've done this a number of times in the past, it's been a while, then I had a little break. For, I had, had some technology issues one time and it kind of scared me a little bit. Uh, I was ready to get back on the horse though and do it tonight. And um, so in the past when I had done this, we've had over a hundred or so people do it. And we've had more than, I think we've had 10 countries represented, 10 different countries. So that's amazing. So I want, I know we have at least four countries represented tonight. I'm thinking five off the top of my head. I've heard South Africa, Australia, the United Kingdom, Canada, and the United States. And it's great too to know your region. Like if you want to share your province or territory or state, that would be amazing. And then my person watching and helping and keep track of what they see on the live feed will start making a list for me. Okay, so that's my big version and here I go on my little guy. And I am going to use, out of the two, before I switched and use the smaller version of our tool set and use number eight, I'm going to use number seven because this is a bigger distance to go. So I'm just going to go for it and use tool seven. Now I may not need to dip back and forth as much. Oh, I think I do. It's all estimation and, you know, learning every tool works a little different. It kind of holds a little bit different amount of paint. Every distance is a little bit, or every dot that you're outlining is a little bit different distance. So just be patient with yourself as you learn your tools and what works best or what you want it to look like too. Now I went fast, I can tell by looking at that because I didn't really get a nice circular shape. I'm gonna zoom in there. It's by far my bestest handiwork, but that's all right. I will slow down. And take my time. Is what happened there, why it doesn't look quite circular. The, the dot in the center is circular. Why that outline doesn't look circular is because I didn't get each of these dots in nice and close to the main one. You can see some spaces in there. I'm gonna blame it on my lighting, my shadows, but that is the why, why that looks like that. I'm going to take my time on these guys. See me running into steam there? I almost ran out. I get a little bit, um, a little bit lazy to go back and get another little dollop of paint. And I paid the price over here. I couldn't get all the way around almost.
So I've set the next one of these events for June 5th. I say that and then I've got, I'm going to check and make sure I'm not telling you the wrong thing. I wrote it down on a piece of paper so I would have it right in front of me. Yes, Wednesday, June 5th. And there is a Facebook event. The thing that has been um, amazing is that we are getting a really great high level of response. If people see the event, they are clicking interested or going. And so imagine doing this with thousands of people. And that's the goal. That's the vision. And the thing is, is that Facebook's being a little hesitant to share the event. And they really want us at Otona to pay to boost the post. And I actually did that this time. Um, and got it a little bit extra visibility, but it is great if you can share these events with other people or whatever, invite them if you think they would be welcome and open to that. You can actually invite them on the Facebook page. Anything that you, you can to, to bring in action to that helps to actually allow other people who follow Otana to see it too, because if um, people don't engage in a post, then Facebook doesn't show it to them. It's like this whole um, way that they encourage business owners to, to promote and pay to promote their, their events and posts. So yeah, you can support it just by you just even clicking a like sign on it helps and supports and a share a comment does as well. So we're really moving along. There's my big guy and my little guy. We've moved out past the test of loyalty and we're back into the blues. Big time back into the blues. So this next step I'm going to get us to do what I learned from another a person who paints, she's an artist. And she calls it a dry run. And I love that term. So we're going to do a dry run. And we're going to use tool two to start out. What we're going to be doing is just going in here. We want a dot to fill in this space and to almost connect here and here. So if you go around like this one I just did, this first one had more space than here. So do a dry run and take your tool too and just see what's going to happen. Is it going to fit? Is it going to have a huge amount of space? Or is it just right? It's kind of like Goldilocks and the three dots. <laughs> um, so when I do the first two, you'll see exactly what I'm looking for the goal to be. What I want you to be comfortable to do is change the tool if you need to, because no one's going to tell on you. Here's what we're aiming to do. We want peacock blue again. So the color we use in here, that's peacock blue. We want the same color going here. I'm going to put a couple dots on and show you the goal, show you what we're aiming for. And then you can make some choices and decisions. Now here I go, lots of practice and I've already done a little tiny boo-boo. And again, this is one of those things you just let go. No worries. So what I was aiming to do, if again, the equator is our guide. If we draw a line through the equators of all of these dots, the ones we're creating right now, we want it to land on that imaginary line that's gone through here. We want it to take in use up the space between these outlining dots and we want to do hopefully not what I just did which is connect them or overlap them we're going to try not to do that and if we do we're going to let it go be gentle with ourselves so that's what you're aiming to do tool two may be the do the tool that you need you may need to use tool two and just do what I'm going to do right now which is reapply some paint and just let it grow about you know 10 20 percent or you may need to use a different tool. You may need to use a tool too in most spots. 
and a different tool in one or two other spots. That's fine too. No one's going to tell on you. At least I'm not. So go ahead and figure out what's going to work for you. And get these dots in place. So this one is a bigger space than the other ones. I'm going to reapply my paint to my tool and go back over that space and get it to grow a little bit. So I'm really curious to see what's going to happen when I go over to my small version because I'm seeing quite a big distance there. This is happening a little bit when I do my smaller versions. Let me just see. There's tool two. Yeah, I think it might just be the trick. Aha! Uh -huh. Yep, yeah, it's pretty good. I thought I might have to turn it into a bigger dot and use the larger size and use tool one, which is a little bit bigger. But this is working okay. So, so far in this design, we have done the same thing in all eight zones. Same tool, same color, eight times except for when we did things like outline or did that special double. But like we're doing right now, we're making eight dots all the same color. We're about to change that in the next step. Oh. I see a question from Peggy about the big dots. I do not. She's asking if I wipe the tool after every dot when I make the big ones. I do not. I want really nice, juicy, large dots. I do not wipe the, the tool after. I don't wipe the tool after any dots unless I see some disasters happen. Like, you know, if I've got old dried up paint and there's a big clump in my paint, then I wipe the tool. But that's the only time. Um, with the exception of the tools that have the metal tips. Those I do find that they build up and they start to change the size of these little dots after doing three or four sections that can happen. So I will wipe those, but when I'm working with the big tools, um, I do not wipe them in between. It's not going to hurt anything if you do. It's, um, should, it would be just fine as long as you go back and you reapply the paint. But you just would be you know, continuously wiping and probably adding more time and more paper towel use. So that's up to you. You could always practice on a piece of cardstock and try both different versions, wiping it off in between, make a set of eight where you wipe off in between each one or ones where you do not do that and see which ones you like better, see what's more consistent for you and do it that way. All right, so now we're going to do something that's special about this design. I'm going to show back here the original. So if you look here, there's a slight difference between here and here. You see that? A little bit of difference. So we've got four sets of dots that are treated the same. And then we have another set of four that are treated the same. Whew. So we got to be on our game. We've got to be super zoned in and focused because we want to make sure we put the dots. As you can see, it kind of has a really nice symmetrical look to it. And we want to try our best to put them in the right spot. So I'm going to guide you through that and see what we come up with. You're going to need first tool four. We haven't had tool four going yet tonight or this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are. Tool four. So we're going to use neon blue. That's the medium shade of the five blues. We want neon blue and we're going to make a double with the neon blue in four of the sections. So basically orientate your piece so you've got those dots we just created. And I want you to visualize north. Am I doing this right? So you, yeah, so there we go. North, east, and I don't know. It's showing up backwards, I think, too. Anyhow, I'm trying to show... Let me say the points of a clock. No, that would show up backwards, too. We want the points of a clock at 12, 6, 
nine and three, or you can think of it as east, west, north and south. Okay, so those ones and those ones. And what we're going to do is do a double in those positions. It's going to come in really close. I'm looking at my original, make sure I get you going in the right spot here. So again, I would just watch me do the double because the first set I always get a little bit wonky. See how far over that is? And there, that's not too bad. I got it a little bit far to one side for what it should be for alignment. So now the ones on either side of it, I don't do anything. I'm either gonna go here or here. So I'm gonna turn that, I skip over this guy. And here's my next one, same color. This is the neon blue, same tool, tool four, and I'm making a double. So here's one, skipped it. Next one, skip this guy, like an ABAB -A -B pattern. Do the same thing. All right, and one more to make four on my big version. All right, there's the big guy. I'm going to switch over and do the small version. I need tool four out of my organized little guys. And I'm going to repeat that. So I'm going to pick one spot to start. And then I skip one section. If I'm going around in order, that'll keep me on the on track. This is the middle shade of blue. This is our, not our darkest, not our lightest. It's right smack dab in the middle. I'm calling it neon blue. And there we go. All right. So we have four, kind of like it's in the corners if it's possible to be corners. Now you want the same size tool. We're going to do the other four sections, but we're using a different color. We want the absolute palest blue. So out of your five shades, this is the lightest blue. And you're going to do the same thing, but you've got four sections that need some love. They need something happening on it. So there we go. And my middle dot that I painted the wrong color is almost dry. I don't know how your folks is doing. But I know what I'm going to show you here. When we get to the end of all of the bottom layer, I'm going to go back in there and cover that up with the right color blue. Yes, that will get it done before I get us to use the hair dryer. All right. So now I do the same thing on my little version. We only have um, one more step to go on the bottom layer. That's it. We'll be getting our hair dryers out and drawing any dots that need a little bit of extra help to get dry. All right, pretty. That is looking nice. All right, so we've got our two different sets of blues going on. We've got our neon blue and our very pale blue. They should alternate, hopefully. And now what we're going to do for our last step, we need tool five, which I don't believe we've used yet in this. And what we're doing is taking pale blue. So that's our second lightest. This one was our lightest. We want the next shade up, a little bit darker. 
And we're going to go back. We've got all of these spots that we're going to put a dot with the same color and the same tool. So we treated things differently for one step. Now we're treating them the same again. So this should just fit right in there and align with the center. So this is our pale blue, second lightest, and it is going with tool five in all eight areas. Same color in each spot. And I just got it on my desk, didn't I? This guy was just about to jump off on me. There we go. I think I put my finger in there almost. All right. And then over here on my little guy, nice doll of a tool five. And I think, so you'll notice some people, if you're ever dotting with a group, some people like to do um, the, the top and the bottom. It's a really great way to see that alignment from the top right straight down to the bottom. Like that. There we go. Okay. So the bottom layer is done except for the boo-boo that Ginger told everybody to do in the start. So what are we going to do? You're going to make a decision for yourself if you want to fix it or if you want to leave it. Um, let me just share with you what we're doing so that you can be making an informed decision. And I might need to brighten or darken. Hang on. Let me get my, there we go. This really shows well. So here is our center dot on the finished example. And the bottom color should have been the peacock blue. It mimics what we're going to be doing out here. And symbolically, it's kind of connected to the theme of loyal. The other issue is if you leave that is the navy color depending on what shade or how dark your navy is you may not see it at all and that might not be an issue it could look really super cool to be honest so make a choice um what i'm going to do mine is basically dry what i mean by basically dry is i've just got enough experience to know i've done it enough that the top of my paint in that center dot is set and inside i know there's some wet paint lurking under the top of this dot uh, and I don't want to disturb it too much or I'm going to just get a really strange situation. So you may want to dry your dot first, but I am going to change my color to the peacock blue. So here I go in nice and close. You can see my fixing. So this is the color we want. This was tool one. Now this comes with lots and lots of experience and practice. And that's the other thing is if you're new to it, this is a little bit risky. The risk is that you could get paint oozed out into these other beautiful dots you've already painted. You may not want to do that. You may decide that's too big of a risk. I'm just going to leave it. So you make the choice that's right for you. And I will show you um, me correcting it. So I'm going over my essentially dry dot. Even more dry would be great. Oh, and you can see I didn't push down quite enough. I had to let the pressure be just so I'm watching for that paint to kind of ooze out and connect over top and completely cover that navy. So there's the big version corrected just in time for the hair dryer. And let me do the same thing over here. And apologies for leading you down the wrong path here with the color, but you know what? I could pretend that I did it just to show, just to show how to fix something. Oh, that's all the learning experience. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera up, turn it around. I always do this in between layers so that you remember who you're talking to and who you're hearing. It's me, Ginger. Here I am. Um, so I have my hair dryer right behind me here, 
And what we need to do is take a moment to get dry dots. So take however long you need. I'm going to be drawing both of them. And then we'll come back. It's the live camera is going to keep on trucking. So not really going anywhere. But we'll return and resume to our dotting. So here I go. getting my finger warm oh and i've also got blue <laughs> blue paint on my finger so my dots are just about dry it's kind of like a cake in the oven if you were to bake a cake in the oven and you look at the cake and then the cake top is completely set but you know if you were to put a knife down in and test for a batter that is not cooked all the way through that's what you're looking for when if as long as you've got the top set and you're gentle with your dots going on the top layer, you're going to be all right. If you are finding that it's hard for you to control the amount of pressure, or if you're just new to the whole process, get these dots really thoroughly dry. Okay. And you'll probably notice as I always do that the hairdryer will crack the dots um, because it's forcing the paint dry really fast. So we're going to be painting over all the dots anyhow, so don't worry about it. However, just make note of that because if you don't have to dry the dots, if you don't have to force them along, you know, you can take a little break other times you are painting and dotting, then do that and let the air dry it and it will probably not crack it. Depends on, you know, where you live and how hot and humid and whatever situation in, in your atmosphere or wherever you are, it can affect it. All right, so I, have mine dried hopefully you do too and we're going to zoom back down and do the magical part because we're going to turn i like to do the side by side hang on before we resume down the dotting we're going to take this and turn it into that ha ha the magic oh it's so magical all right here we go so this will go way faster. Not that I'm going to be moving us along any faster, but just the process, it does just not take as long. That's all. So if you're new to it, get ready. Now, here's one thing it took. Sorry, it takes me forever to get this camera just so. There we go. Took me a long time, like a year and a half of teaching this to people to realize if you're new, leave the center for later. I'm going to assume we've got new people with us. I think we do actually. People new to dotting. We're going to leave the center until later. And the reason is if we do that first, the center is the most visible. Often it is. Now, 
especially if we had white as the bottom layer, that center dot on top just it just screams out it's so uh, prominent and if we do it first our newbies could get it to the left or the right as opposed to getting it bang on the center so we're going to leave it and be one with our new folks all right and we'll come back to it don't let me forget everybody you can help me remember to come back to it so we're going to start then with step b which was this right here we're going to take tool seven neon blue that's shade number three of our blues right smack dab in the middle. And we're going to put on each of these a little tiny bit. So I'm gonna get right in close. So new people, what you're aiming for is to cover up say, let's estimate about 70% of the bottom dot. You always want to still see a portion of it, a ring of the bottom dot. So be gentle, get a feel for how heavy or how much um, paint you can put on because you want to still see some of that bottom dot. So we're gonna do that to all of these guys here. And just remember, I'm still popping over to my small version and repeating that. And this is so tawny. I'm going to hold it up in my hand like this so you can see me do it. Now, I don't usually do it this process and hold the piece in my hand. I don't trust my other hand, I guess. But I think for right now where I'm doing the top layer and this is tiny and for you to be able to see it and to save moving the camera around, all of those reasons, this is going to work for a few steps. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Down it goes. So that was step B. Step A was the center. Step B is what we just did. Then we're going to do, keep this tool, oh, I'm gonna switch it back. Keep tool seven in your hand. Remember our double that we did, here it is. Here's the double. And that was a long time ago now. We're putting on pale blue. Not the lightest. Here's our lightest pale blue way out here. We don't want that one. We want the one that's just a shade darker. So this is the second lightest is another way to say it. So again, control how much paint is on there. Just a little bit. And we're going to put on every single one of these dots that we created the double with just a little bit of that light blue paint. You'll notice I'm not a, being as sticky about telling everybody to, to paint from a certain position. Um, there are times where the alignment can really be impacted by these top, oops, top layer of dots. Um, I'll point out when those ones, in my opinion, are, are what we're working on. These ones, uh, there's, you're just re really aiming for them to be dead center in the dot you're painting on. There's not too much you can do with alignment at this point with those dots. And the small version. Here I go. So sometimes you'll notice that what I do here, instead of going back and getting more paint, if I'm really gentle with my first dot, I can get two dots that are about the same size. I'm gonna to switch to tool eight here, actually. I think I'd have better control over what I'm doing. I'm just, sorry if I'm not in the camera. I apologize. Let's see if I can keep an eye out for that. I might have moved it out of the camera shot. There. Okay. So you see it's already starting to kind of take on this glowing look, and this layered, layered feel to it. Beautiful. We want tool five. We're using that neon blue, 
shade three, the one right in the middle. So we want tool five. Oh, I can't get it the right way up. I don't know. It's tool five. Sh middle shade of blue, neon blue, and we're going to be putting it right there. Now take a look at your very first dot you create. Hopefully you've got a result similar to mine where you can still see the bottom dot. If you've completely covered it up, stop. Get a smaller tool in your hand. Don't make it harder on yourself to achieve that. I'm being gentle and just being mindful that that's what I'm aiming to achieve so that I don't completely blast that bottom dot out of the water and cover it up. One of the challenging things with this is just how many blues we've got on the go. When we get out here, we've got a lot of colors that are similar, but we're going to be treating them differently and they start to look different. So um, we'll have to be very mindful of what dot is what step when we get out there. So far, so good, hopefully, with everybody with their top dots. If you ever do put the wrong color on, all you've got to do is dry it and then you put the bottom color on top, just basically it's like starting over. You paint that spot over, dry it, and away you go again. So it's very uh, forgiving in that sense. Now what tool was that? Tool five, because I've got to do my small version. I'm gonna keep this one down this time because I'm using a bit bigger tool. And I want a little bit more paint, there we go. You'll see I'm, I'm actually adding sometimes a little bit more paint and dotting back over it. If I feel I want that dot to expand a little bit, cover up a little bit bigger percent of the bottom dot, then now you go back and I get more paint. There we go. I don't know about anybody else, but my paper towel is starting to look like I... It's done its job. I think I'll be able to get through the whole time, though, with one, but you can always change the paper towel if you need to. So back to tool five. It keeps going upside down. I think it's because I've got my camera upside down. Let's do it that way. You need now the bright yellow. It's set there for a while. And I'm going to darken this up again because I want you to see that orange closer to the color that it is. So here's the orange, and we're going to put with tool five, some bright yellow right on top. So the relationship here, these ones we just did here with the blues, those are the same size tools. This is the same combination of tools. It's tool three on the bottom and tool five on top, just different colors. And away we go with that bright yellow. Beautiful. Oh, I'm just going to stop and look at it with the darker camera there. I hope you're enjoying doing yours and that that bright, vibrant color just speaks to you. It's certainly kind of popping out to me right now. It's like a little lesson or something there to teach the blues something. Very, I'm feeling very symbolic tonight. <laughs> All right, and I'm over to my small version and I'm going to do the same thing. So hopefully as we do this, the people new to this are getting a real feel of painting on the top second layer. Because remember, we haven't done the center yet. And this 
we want to go back and we're, we will be going back here now and doing the center, or at least I will. You can still go back later and do it if you want, but this is a good time to do it. Uh, what we're going to do is these large peacock blue. Now, just get really clear in your mind before you do anything. Brighten this up a little bit. Reminder that we've got lots of peacock blues. We've got these ones that we did with tool one. Those are the ones we're going to be focused on for this step. And we're ignoring these. They look really similar, same color, almost the same size. So be very mindful in this step. We want the ones that we have outlined with the little dots. That's what we're focused on. I'm going to get you to do a dry run with tool two and just hover over top of those dots that we indicated are the ones we're focused on. The danger in this step is that tool two could be too big. And about 30% of you, that's going to be the case. And if you're worried and think, I'm going to cover that completely over, switch to tool three. Use tool three. You can even paint, um, take tool three, paint a dot, and then go back, get more paint on the same tool and grow it a little bit uh, because we want to have control over this. If you can use tool two, use it. I like how much percent it covers up of the, of the bottom dot personally, if it's possible for you to use it. So here's what we're doing. We're taking navy paint. It will look black probably on your screen, but it's not. It's navy. And we are putting it on each of those spots. So stay focused as you do this. Make sure you don't misstep and work with the other peacock blues. So they're gonna be treated differently in a moment. Now, our center dot, you may or may not have changed. If you changed it to the peacock blue, it's the same type of dot, the same combination as what we're painting right now. It's got peacock blue on the bottom if you changed it. And what you'll be doing, what I'm going to do here is do the center with the navy with this tool. So this is a good time to go back in here and do the center. And I'm going to do the same thing on the little version. I'll do my center dot and those. Now, even me, I'm going to switch. I'm going to use a little bit smaller tool. I think I'll have better control over it on this. This would be one spot in the relationship to using the small version of our tools where I would say nine times out of 10, even I switch up here on this step. Everything else is very consistent with the same instructions, same steps. This is one where people often switch. Just depends on how big you make that tool one dot, depends on how much control um, and how much pressure you put on the top dots, how much paint you pick up, lots of factors. Okay, that's beautiful. I love that navy on top of the peacock blue. We've got someone going for the event record with 10 paper towel pieces used. Peggy has noted that in her comment here in the chat. 10 is currently the record. Here is what my paper towel looks like. If you can beat Peggy's record, let us know. Put it in the chat. Um, what are we doing next? Let's see. We want to look at these other peacock blue dots. Remember they started out peacock blue, but they're going to be treated differently than the ones we just painted. So we want tool six. No, I'm lying to you. Ignore me. We want tool four. <laughs> Later we'll want tool six. So sorry about that. It's always the teacher's fault. They tell you the wrong thing in teacher world. So my background, for those of you who don't know me, uh, is I have been a teacher in my local area in the public school system for nearly 15 years before Otana and Traveling Kindness Rocks, formerly Traveling Kindness Rocks, um, before that evolved. So as a teacher, the worst thing you can do is verbally say aloud the wrong instruction because you then have to stop and get everybody all back. So sorry, I just verbally said the wrong instruction. We actually want tool four. So double check yourself, make sure you've got tool four. 
and we want neon blue. That's the third shade, the middle shade of blue. And that is going on these remaining peacock blue dots, the ones that were made possibly with tool two. Now, if you adjusted and used a different tool in the bottom layer in this step, then you will need to potentially do the same thing. In this step, you might need a larger tool or smaller tool, depending on what you did. So adjust if you need to with this tool size, but still use this beautiful neon blue or whatever version you've got you're painting with. Well, Sharon's going to win the prize for the most creative way to clean her tools because she's just written that she uses her sweatshirt to clean her tools. That must be a very colorful, well-loved sweatshirt, Sharon. And I think you'll have to share a photo with us in the Facebook event page because now we're all going to be curious. That's what you've gone and done is you have made us all curious. Now I'm really changing. Oh, no, that was the right tool thinking I was changing my tool size here. I'm doing my small version. After this step, we are getting, oops, sorry, the camera just, you can see my shadows that I've been competing with. It's the shadow of, there's my hand and there's the cord. And that's what I've been competing with. Someday I'll have some professional studio. Actually, what I'd really love to do is broadcast from different places. I've done that a little bit in the past, but I'd like to revisit that and and be at different places and and that would be awesome. So now we're out to the spot where we kind of broke from our mold here a little bit. We did these different steps. So we've got to get clear on what we're doing. So let me make sure I'm telling you the right thing. First, let me double check the tool. You're going to want tool six. And let's start with the neon blue. We did the neon blue first in our bottom layer. So let's start there. So here's our neon blue right here. And on the neon blue, what you're doing is putting the pale blue, okay? So the pale blue is not light pale blue or the very light pale blue. We want the second lightest. That wasn't a very clear way to say that. You don't want the lightest, you want the second lightest. And I'm just looking at what we're doing here. We're going to do this. I just double checked my steps to make sure I, I don't lead you in the right or in the wrong direction. So I've got this right. For this step, you can actually do this. I want you to do this. Not you can, you should. On all of the doubles. Okay? So even though the bottom color is different on each one, this step is the same. Okay? So it's tool six. And this color is the second lightest blue. You're going to do this on all of the doubles. They'll look a little different because the bottom color is different. They get treated differently on the third layer. We'll go back to looking a little different. I just realized this whole time, the way I've set myself up is moving my hand underneath the camera every single time. Hopefully that hasn't been a distraction. All right, tool six. Hello, Billy. Billy's joining us. I'm glad you're joining in and just watching and being present, Billy. And hopefully next time you can, you can dot. I just, I'm trying to be really in the moment just, um, so I can experience and, and realize and just be mindful that you are all out there, that we are all connecting together. That's a hard 
bill for me because I'm talking and leading and hopefully it's been easier for you folks to all be, be aware of everybody's presence or at least have a sense of it. I found that it's kind of come and gone for me. And when I take a moment, I'm quiet and I let my voice be quiet, not chat. It's easier. It's awesome. And what we'll do after for those of you who are willing and able and, and open to it, please, please, please share a picture on our Facebook event page. That's the best way to, to share. You can share elsewhere as well on other Otona channels, but that place has kind of become like the hub for this event. And the other thing I will ask is encourage you, please share a photo that includes your face if you're willing to. I know some people that that's a big ask and I respect that completely, but it is really amazing for those who are open to sharing their face for us to see each other and to be aware that, oh, that was that person that was making that comment so that it becomes, um, you know, a community of people. If you're open to that, that would be awesome. And if you're not comfortable sharing a picture of yourself, if you share a picture of what you've created, um, and if you can share it near something that represents your community, even if it's just a a sign or a pamphlet or something that has your community name on it helps us and reminds us again that it's somebody else from somewhere else that we were present with during this time. It's so awesome. Um, now, where are we at? Out on the outer edge. We've gone to the edge. So here, it's like this cont continuous flip-flopping around. Here, the first step, we did them all the same. Now we're not. We're going to do them differently. So um, we need tool six again. We want tool six. And yeah, let me get you to focus in on here. So bring your attention to the spot where my fingers are pointing where the bottom was that darker blue. Here's our lighter guys, the darker blue. So find those. That's what we're focused in on. We've got tool six, and what we're going to do is take, let me just double check here. We want neon blue, no. Yes, we want neon blue. I had to double check. Neon blue is going to go here and be really super gentle because if you push really hard, you'll cover that up. Absolutely, and I'm going to encourage you to use tool six and not switch to a smaller tool because we want to put another dot on top of this. Okay, so watch where I put it. Make sure you're clear on what we're doing. Here's the neon blue on the base. You want that dot, only those, only the ones with the neon blue. And to help keep things straight, you're putting neon blue there. Neon blue's here, neon blue's there. So you'll only be doing this in four spots. Just those four with the neon blue. And I'm going to pop over here and do the same thing on the small version. And then we'll do the other four. So hang on to tool six. It's going to get a different color than the other four. We've got white paint. It has not been used at all yet. So finally, white paint's coming into play. So you've got here four spots. Let me see if I can move it so you can see my fingers. Four spots where, right there, there's nothing on top of those yet. So it's tool six again and use white paint. So it really lightens it up and brightens it up. So this was our pale blue and here's the white paint in that combination. Being gentle so you don't cover up the bottom. Ah, I just had a white goober. I'm going to leave it, but you can see there that it, it went a little bit heavy handed. That was because my paint was sitting drying out and I lifted up, the, I didn't stir it. I should have stirred my paint and all that did was put um, the thick part that it kind of formed on the top layer of the white paint. It had um, just been picked up by the tool and that's what happened there. 
Okay, that is our second layer. So I'm gonna bring this back up. Hang on, this always starts out upside down. So the second layer went super quick comparatively, and so does the third layer. So I'm doing such a good job with my handy dandy thing that Lisa made. She's gonna get all kinds of emails saying, Lisa, you wanna make me one of those tool holders. <laughs> Okay, hair dryer time. We're going to dry layer one or layer two. Please and thank you, everybody. All right, so I haven't been sharing anything just yet. Oh, that doesn't look quite dry. Hang on. A little more hair dryer time. That extra 20 seconds should hopefully do the trick. So I haven't been sharing anything yet about Otana and what uh, the mission is for Otana. As you can probably tell if you don't know already, it's I was talking in the beginning and gave our intention setting and, and all of that. That right, We use dot mandalas as a way for people to, ex to express connection to each other. And we have a number of programs and ways to get involved. So as we continue uh, to do our our final layer, I'll share just little tidbits so that you're aware of how you can get involved if you if you so choose to. You're already involved by being here and I really truly appreciate it because uh, this is a, a vision of mine for this global dotting time to get bigger and bigger. I think it can be so powerful um, for ourselves personally and I think for a trickle effect uh, to radiate out into the world. So if we take time and become one together and we've essentially eliminated all the boundaries and borders that we've built over time as humans, we haven't eliminated all of them. I guess I should, I know that we have a language barrier. Obviously I'm speaking in English. So hopefully that will be something that I can get into a position to overcome for others to take part. But um, we have overcome a lot of boundaries and barriers by of all of us being here together tonight. So I'll explain, explain some other things that you can do if you wish to get involved as we finish our, our top layers and I will also remind you of our next session and when we're all done painting our final layer I'll bring the camera back up and just remind us of what our intention was and invite you all to connect back on the Facebook group so let's uh, go back to our piece and this will go even faster if you're new this will be like, whoa, how did we do that so fast? So it looks so cool right now. And we're going to hopefully add what you will think is some extra oomph to it and you like it. And if you don't like it and you like it, when we add more dots, you can always paint them back over if you so choose. It's a very forgiving process this way. Uh, the whole third layer, we are using tool seven. Got my camera back upside down again. Here we go. So we want tool seven, just be ready with your sweatshirts <laughs> to clean it off <laughs> or paper towel if you're like me. <laughs> oh, that's really super funny. I love it. Um, okay, so our first dot, I'm just looking to see, is there any spot? Yeah, most of this is going to be navy that we're working with, um, but there are a few spots where it won't be. So 
you need your dark, 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 dark navy. And this would be one of the dots. I'm going to do this one first. Where I would take a moment and align it with the center. Because you really can see that visually. So if it's a little to the left or a little to the right, you're going to notice it. So this would be one where I would take the time and rotate my piece and align it. So this is tool seven and navy, little tiny dot on that bright yellow. Aligning them with the center. So one of the things that we have is a program called the Mandalas of Hope. And I have a couple of them here with me tonight that I'll show you in a moment. We originally called the program Traveling Kindness Rocks. That started over three years ago. And they still, the Mandalas of Hope, mean the same as the Traveling Kindness Rocks. But with a few changes, we've been able to make it so that more people can get involved and take part so they are small versions they are painted right now on discs just like this one and they're this size they're painted by volunteers somewhere in the world and then the um, mandala comes back to us here at the organization space and we send it out to a recipient and we know about that recipient because someone has requested the mandala of hope for their loved one, a friend or family member who is grieving, going through an illness, something to that effect. People go onto our website and request one. And then we pay for the cost of all of the program through sales and through sponsors so that we can get the mandala of hope to the recipient. We've sent almost 1,600 of them so far. We have people from three countries taking part as daughters, D-O-T-T-E-R, and that is expanding. And that is something that you may feel open or drawn to taking part in. And I'm gonna get going on this next step, and then I'll show you a couple of the mandalas of hope that I have here. So also you may feel to request one, and even if you paint or um, make these yourself. It would be a really big support to our program if you were to tell people about it. Um, even request one yourself because they are supported financially by thousands of people. And the uh, paperwork that comes with it, the paperwork, the packaging, which I'll show you in a minute, explains that, that it's a symbol of everybody because everybody has helped to get it there. It would not be in place without the efforts of so many people. So what I'm doing now, same color. This is the navy and it is going right in here. And it's hard to see it really, but it's adding just another layer of depth. I'm going to bring it in there so you can see it. So we switched from rocks to the discs to overcome a number of challenges that the rocks posed. And we loved the rocks. Recipients loved the rocks, but the pros totally outweighed the cons because we don't have to worry about accessibility to rocks. We can have a streamlined um, system in place where people are painting certain designs and they fit always on the same size and we know it's going to work for them and be successful for the people taking part. So the next thing I'm doing is starting to look at how I can get schools involved. That will be the next stage. So yeah. And I'm going to finish this and I'll show you two that I have here and tell you where they're going. They're about to go out. So this one here that I'm going to show. So this is the packaging. And this is actually it might be upside down for you. There we go. This was painted by Karen in the United Kingdom. And this is the strength pattern. So it explains the pattern here on the back. And then when people open it up, I haven't written the recipient's name in here. It will share um, 
a little bit about Karen. However, she wanted us to explain her name and where she's from. And then there's a letter explaining that this is from all of us, everybody connecting together to get this where it's going. So this is a cool little packaging. That one is going to Ohio, USA to a breast cancer um, patient. And then I have one other one that was painted. Actually, this one was painted by Lisa, my assistant, Lisa, who volunteers in the program too. I keep putting them upside down. This is the love is all we need pattern. This one is going to someone who has a terminal illness in Texas, United States. So that is the Mandalas of Hope program. And you can learn all about it on our website if you are interested in connecting in any way, taking part as a daughter, um, taking part as a requester, or just telling an organization like someone that might support people in, in wellness in any area they might be interested in to know about the program and uh, to, to submit requests for people that they're, they're supporting. So we are back to tool seven. We've done this set of navy dots and we have done this set of navy dots. Let's do another set of navy dots. Keep going with the navy. So right now we're doing this one here. This is where I can tell I didn't quite get my dot all the way dry, but if I'm gentle, that will be all right. Now I am um, doing these events free, as you know, if anybody feels drawn to though, I did put a spot on our global dotting time page where you can submit a donation that helps to pay for the program. If you feel to, if you take part tonight and that speaks to you, there's a donation button on our global totting time page and we're using all 100% of that goes into that program. And the remainder of the funds raised come from other initiatives, other things we do, other things that bring in money. So when our tools are sold, um, when patterns are purchased on our website, that is where the money's coming from to pay for it. So that's why it means everybody connecting together. So that was our founding, our founding program and founding initiative. And then things just kind of grew from there to do things like this global dotting time. And we also have a program where we connect together and support charities. That's called Dot for Charities. And you can check that out if that is inter of interest to you. We've got people taking part from a number of countries in that. And that's really fun. And we make a donation every month to the charity that we're supporting. One more set of dots with the Navy. I'm just getting us to do all the Navy stuff. And what you need to do is find out here. We want to find the right ones. So here is our um, neon blue. Here's the light, guys. Here's the neon blue. We want... This dot right out here to have navy on it. And it's not going to be all eight, only the ones that look like this. Okay, so I'm going to put one here and there and there and there. Navy on each of those. And I do the same over here. I'm switching to the little guy here. All right. So we have done all of the navy bits. Keep that tool seven in your hands. Remember, it's tool seven all the way. And let's keep focused on that same part. So here's the navy we just painted. Right in here you have a double. And I want you to put on that a little tiny bit of white. Like that. Okay. And again, only do that on those four. I should say those four sections because it's really eight dots that you're putting it on. All right. Angie, the neon blue that I'm using is Craft Smart. Angie's saying about her neon blue, and they call it neon blue. 
and it really kind of glows. And I just discovered really early on, I loved how it looked on top of um, the peacock blue. I love that combination and I use it often as probably some people have figured out. And we just have one more little bit to do. We've got, here's our white dot right out here. On these, we're going to put the neon blue. So it's going to go from lighter on the bottom, a little bit darker, and then a little bit darker. It progresses in darkness as it goes up. So there you go. This is our last set of dots for the whole piece. After this, if you've got any little um, drips that happens, you can take the black paint and cover them up if you want. And I will be putting our camera back up, just chatting. Thank you all for coming. I have no idea, this is the irony, I have no idea how many people joined in because my technology i don't know why you, i remember in the past other times it telling me how many views and whatever was going on there's nothing on here telling me i can tell there's people out there watching because i can see the live feed but i don't have a sense of how many views how many people are with us so i hope that all of you that joined us live had a great time and i want to thank you for taking this time out of your day and your week to organize yourself to join us live i hope that you spent some time reflecting about um, loyalty and maybe something new that you hadn't thought of came up as we were dotting along or maybe as you look at your piece something will come up after um, and allow you some time to think about the concept of, of loyalty in your life. The next event that we're doing is on June the 5th. The Facebook event is already posted and I welcome you to please follow it, share it, like it, whatever you can do to help spread the word. Because like I said, once we, once people see this, they are interested in gathering together with each of you um, and you with them. And it is my absolute pleasure to provide that space for you to do so. So I'm going to conclude by asking you to share your photo if you haven't already done it or are about to do it and welcome you, encourage you to share one that shows your face, number one, and number two, something to do with your location if you're able to. So to conclude, our dotting time intention was this. It is our intention to gather together to form a peaceful space where we experience our interconnection and oneness. We are transcending borders and boundaries to simultaneously create a symbol of our unity. The dots we paint signify every person connecting here, each one strengthening and expanding this space. The finished mandala is a beautiful collection of us all and represents this powerful time together. Thank you for being part of our time together. Bye, everybody.